I always get very excited when this works. <laughs> Technology, I think we finally might have cracked it this year. Good morning. Welcome to another Sunday in the kitchen. Morning crummers. We're just going to have a couple of minutes and let everybody come and join us. But if you're here, good morning, happy Sunday. Welcome to the Facebook page, the YouTube channel, or the group, wherever you're joining us from. Say hello, let me know in the comments. Um, I'm really excited today because we're starting our Christmas recipes. I know we're still in November, but trust me. <laughs> This is going to disappear really, really quickly. So as you can see, look, we're all a bit festive. We've got the tree here. We've got some snowflakes and Santa. And I've got my, my Christmas dress on as well. So <laughs> very, very excited. Um, this week's is a Bailey's chocolate tart, as you can see over there and um it's not just christmas it can be any time of the year but hey let's uh, let's do it for the holidays let's get really starting to get festive so um i'm really excited to start these um i've popped the schedule up on the facebook page as well for you guys so you can see what we're going to be doing over the next couple of weeks um but yeah let's do the usual it is actually a beautiful blue sky sunny Sunday morning here in the Cotswolds. So um, after we had some torrential rain and wind yesterday, um, so it's looking really, really beautiful out there today. Um, but if you're sat at home in your jammies with a cup of tea or a cup of coffee, or even a hot chocolate at this time of the morning, <laughs> put your feet up for the next hour and a bit, maybe, probably just about an hour, we're gonna be going through a Bailey's chocolate tart. Yay! <laughs> Christmas is coming. It's um the, the village has already started to put all their lights up and people have got their trees up and everything. And I know some of you guys have as well. So I think we're really embracing a little bit of that Christmas festive magic um this year with everything that's been going on. We all need sparkle in our lives, but I think we need a little bit of extra sparkle as well. So uh, this this is how <laughs> this is how our Christmas look. So uh, let's get going, shall we? And there's three, two, one. Let's start some Christmas baking. I'm so excited! <laughs> right, guys. Good morning. Happy. What are we? The 14th of uh, 15th of November. Happy wedding anniversary to my brother and my sister-in-law, um, who uh, are somewhere out there in the internet world. My nephews have been baking as well this weekend, so it was really exciting seeing lots of little things from the guys coming over this weekend. But for you this morning, we are baking a Bailey's chocolate tart. Um, this guy actually has been on the blog for crikey. This one's been up there for nearly eight years or so and actually this is a chocolate and caramel tart which we were going to do at the Baileys for festive touch and the caramel sort of disintegrated didn't work out last night that I was trying to get ready for you but um so we're just going to go with a bait and sort of a really rich decadent Baileys chocolate tart instead um but if you want to give the caramel version a go it is on the blog I will link it for you and um, you can try that one out. But this is a Bailey's chocolate tart then. It's really rich, it's really decadent. Um, it's perfect for that whole Christmas indulgent or any time of the year really, um, but it does feel a bit naughty. We're gonna be making a, uh, a rectangle one today. I wanted to try this new pan out, but this will go into a nine inch um pie tin so it will it will serve sort of about 10 to 12 slices um so it is perfect for a family gathering or dessert or something like that and we're going to be going actually with a we're going to be making a chocolate pastry case for this one this original one had an oreo crust and you can do that that's a really easy way to um make it even quicker i guess but this you can make the night before you can even make it 
in advance and freeze it. So you don't want to be running around and faffing and doing all of that in the run up to the last days before Christmas. So it's really super simple to make it ahead. We can even prep it all beforehand. So we'll make the pastry and then, and then finish it off just before Christmas or uh, in the run up to then. Um, and like I said, you can indulge it with a layer of the caramel, which would this is how the caramel disaster last night. <laughs> We're not going to be putting that in, but I will explain how and what where that fits as we go through. And it is really easy to make this um, gluten free if you want. You could use a gluten free uh, flour, like a Dove's Farm flour, sort of a gluten free blend for the pastry, or you could make it with the uh, biscuit crust using. Um, gluten-free chocolate biscuits or cookies and cream there as well and if you don't want to put the alcohol in that's fine as well you can take that out and just have a really decadent rich chocolate tart so this is the guy we're going to be making and uh, yeah let's get on so uh, we are I'm going to put my this is the Christmas attire now as we go through <laughs> to December so let's get a penny on those so I don't get covered in everything and we'll talk about some ingredients let's just get rid of the hair as well right then ingredients wise we are going to make a chocolate pastry and we're also going to make our rich chocolate babies filling so for the pastry, it's quite a simple, um, standard, short, sweet pastry. So we're gonna be using a plain flour, the all-purpose flour if you prefer. This is 175 grams. And we're gonna be actually, normally with a sweet pastry like this, you'd have more of that in, but because we're making this chocolate, we're substituting some of the flour that we'd normally have in there for some cocoa powder. And I'm using an unsweetened, just a regular cocoa powder um, from the supermarket because we don't want to be, we're going to add icing sugar instead of a granulated sugar. This, So we, we're using unsweetened cocoa powder because we don't want to add extra sugar to it because that will cause our pastry to get too um, short. And like I say, we're going to be using icing sugar then as our um, sugar in the pastry. You can use caster sugar, but you would um, cream the butter and the sugar for that instead. We've got two egg yolks uh, in here, which I separated out last night, because um, I'm using the egg whites for some meringue tomorrow, so we've sorted that out. And we've also got 140 grams of butter. Again, I'm using slightly salted butter. Um, if you want to use unsalted butter, just add a quarter of a teaspoon, just a pinch, a quarter of a teaspoon of fine sea salt. Um, if you're using regular table salt, go for less because it's the way it is, it's a lot saltier. So just, just a pinch of salt there to bring it out. And that's in the fridge. I cubed it last night and it's chilling and keeping it nice and cool in the fridge because we're going to be doing this all by hand so we're going to rub it in so I want to keep that in the fridge until I'm ready to use it because my hands are quite warm. Then for our filling uh, it's sort of very similar to a chocolate ganache so but we're just going to add a little bit more cream and some butter in there to make it smoother um, so it's not as as heavy a normal ganache if you're pouring it over the top or you're using it in um, baking and, and layers and in cakes is, is quite rich so to to counteract that we're going for a mix of chocolate so i'm using 150 grams of dark chocolate and then i'm balancing that out with 200 of milk chocolate so we're still going to get that really deep dark richness of the chocolate ganache with the dark but it's not going to be so um really bitter or, or quite or, or too too much um by balancing it out with our milk chocolate uh, and we're also going to be using some double cream or heavy cream uh, that is also in the fridge and a, like i say a little bit of butter 
to melt in there with the chocolate because that will bring everything together and make it really nice and smooth and silky. Uh, we're going to be using um, Aldi's equivalent because we couldn't get any Baileys. <laughs> so this is Ballycastle, but this is an Irish country cream. It's the same as the Baileys, um, an Irish cream there. And uh, we're going to be using actually quite a lot, 150 mils of Baileys. You can reduce the Baileys if you don't want to go too strong on the Baileys front. Um, and when I make the chocolate filling, I will see how much. I might not use all of that 150 grams. You could, if you wanted to, um, switch the Baileys for something else. You could uh, use an orange liqueur. So you could have like a Cointreau or a Grand Marnier in there for a chocolate orange tart instead. You wouldn't need as much because they're a lot more... Um, stronger in their flavor so if i was using something like that i'd probably cut it right down to about 100 mil at the most um you see so you could bring those in as well and then baileys and also aldi and other stores do sort of flavored versions of their irish creams and i've got a gingerbread one in the cupboard as well that i really want to try so you could put that in instead so you get the irish cream element plus a hint of that gingerbread as well coming through everything. So that's our pastry and our filling. Like I say, the simple ingredients, again, we've got nothing fancy going on here. The, the fanciest thing, I guess, is our Irish cream, and if you don't want to pop that in, that's fine by me. Um, in terms of equipment, we're going to be doing it all by hand, like I say, so you just need a, a large mixing bowl. We're going to need another mixing bowl to make our ganache in, or you could use the same one, just wash it up between. Oops. You're going to need a rolling pin, obviously, for rolling out our pastry. Maybe just a little, you're going to need a little bit of extra flour. Depends how you roll this out, and we'll talk about that when we get to rolling out the pastry. But a little bit of flour just to dust your work surface. Um, I'm going to add a drop of our vanilla extract in. Again, this is the homemade one. And for the tart itself, this recipe will make one large nine inch tart. And that's the loose base tin. I'm going in with a longer rectangle tart. I've had this tin in the cupboard now for a couple of months and I'm desperate to use it. So we're using that today. Um, so this one, I think it was just uh, from Asda in the summer whilst it was on offer. Um, so we're using a long rectangle tart. And then if I've got any left over, I'm gonna be using these and making little individual tarts um, there as well with anything left over. But if you want to make this to serve a nice big nine inch loose based tart tin is perfect. You can slice it up, serve it, and it looks great on the table at Christmas. So that's all our ingredients and our equipment. Nothing really too strenuous in here. So last night I did actually make some pastry as well. So um, we've got this ready to roll out for our tart tin later, but we are going to be talking about how we make pastry first. Um, and because we want to chill it, to let it rest, let that butter all form back in, the fats all come back together after we've rubbed everything together and made it into that dough. So that's been uh, made last night and chilled in the fridge overnight and I want to bring it up to room temperature before I start to roll it out. So that will, uh, that's been out a few moments now. So by the time we get to it, it will have, a, have about 30 to 40 minutes out of the fridge. So then, Let's get stuck into making some chocolate pastry. I'm going to just take my watch off. Um, and as always, uh, I'll leave all the ingredients up here on the side um, so you can see what we're doing. And yeah, just got my little, remember what I'm doing. So you can do this in a food processor if you've got like a magic mix or or something like that you can make pastry in the food processor it is quicker um, and you can just blitz it all together turn it all out and pull it together and to be honest that is what I did last night <laughs> um, so but in the meantime let's just get a knife 
as well. Off time. So my chocolate, uh, my chocolate, my butter had been chilling in the fridge overnight. So this is nice and cool, ready to go in. And I've just thought I'm going to sieve. So we're going to sieve everything together first, our dry ingredients for the pastry. So that's our plain flour of 175 grams. Straight in. Oops. We sieve because we don't want any lumps or anything in the pastry. So just sieving through just and also aerates it as we know. Then um, our cocoa powder through. I'd say you can make this without making a pastry if you don't want to. You can make this with a biscuit base instead. Just like we do with the cheesecake, so obviously you're going to need a bit more. So, and then let's go in with our icing sugar. So it's 175 grams of plain flour, 50 grams of icing sugar, sorry, 50 grams of cocoa powder, and then 75 grams of the icing sugar. And the icing sugar is the one that can be quite... Um, lumpy so that's why sieving here because we're, we're not relying on anything to help break those up we're going to be doing it all by hand if you're doing it with a food processor you can um, just chuck it all in there we go <laughs> ice and sugar coming through it does feel like snow at christmas i'm just gonna give those clumps a little bit of a anything that won't go through. Oh. There we go. So step one, quite simple, <laughs> easy to do. And I'm just going to fold everything together with a spoon. And a bit like when we made the gingerbread dough the other week, it's very, very similar uh, method. So um, everybody says pastry, cold hands, yes, if you're rubbing it in. If you know that you really don't want to do it uh, like this, you can do it um, with the food processor, like I said. But we're going to rub in here. So this is 140 grams of slightly salted butter that I chopped and into cubes oops come on out last night welded itself a little bit into the bottom left and then with clean hands we're just gonna um just rinse them quickly with Been touching things. Clean and dry hands, then we're going to be going into our pastry. And when we're rubbing it together, we're sort of rubbing it gently between our fingers, just like we did with the gingerbread to form that sandy texture. This butter is well chilled. <laughs> If you don't want to do this, you don't want to get your hands in, you can, like I say, you can do this with the food processor. Just pulse it very, very gently um, together. So the thing, the key things with pastry is just have a little patience. It will all come together um, with they do, it's the fat that's binding everything. So that chilled butter now, with the, the heat from my hands, a little bit of heat there from my hands, is helping melt it together, bringing it, rubbing it into the flour, sugar and cocoa powder. 
met. So and now I'm gonna get this beautiful dark chocolate um, pastry. And we're gonna add a couple of egg yolks as well into here to help bind it, give it that richness. So we're making this in a metal tin and the metal tin is a great thing for pastry, especially to avoid the dreaded soggy button. Button, bottle. <laughs> if you, um, if you uh, have a ceramic tin you can, or pie dish you want to do this in, you can do it, but your bottom, your bottom of your tart is more likely to get um, a little solid. It's not going to cook as uh, short and get that nice firm base on it. Um, so if you do have a metal tin, that's best for the uh, for making pastry tarts and cases. It allows distributes the heat a bit more, gets the heat right in there for the for the base. And this is coming together now. The fat and the butter's rubbing in. Not, don't want too many clumps. So I've just got a little bit left to go. But I can feel it coming together. This is it. So yeah, so you don't have to make this with a pastry base. Um, you can make it with uh, a biscuit base. An Oreo biscuit base um, works really, really well. Uh, and again, this is a good one with the kids, obviously not the alcohol side, but the, this mixing in, they can get their hands in there, um, really get, you know, messy, touching everything through. You will get chocolatey hands, trust me. So I'm just picking it up, rubbing the butter into my dry ingredients. There. Getting rid of any big clumps of butter. We, you know, we want the. We don't want big clumps of butter in here because when we bake the pastry, it will melt through. So that's probably it's like a soil. Anyone you've ever heard of people calling things chocolate soil? It's a bit like that. You can also, if you wanted to do Oreos, you could put, um, you can do this, make an Oreo pastry instead. Right, that's just all rubbed in. I have some very chocolatey hands, so I'm just gonna rinse these out in the chocolate mix with our pastry um, starts. That's our flour, icing sugar, cocoa powder, and the butter all rubbed in. Then we've got two egg yolks in here. And I'm just gonna, they're just medium egg yolks. I'm just gonna give them a quick whisk up before I add in. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna use this to bind it all together. If you need to, you might need a little bit of extra water, cold water to help it. So I'm just going to pop some of that in there so we can get all that egg yolk in. And then just with a knife, you can bring it all together. So we're just using the knife to cut it through. And when we get to the point when it's starting to really come together, we can get in there with our hands. There we go. 
like I said, if you want to, you can do this with a food processor. Excellent. I'm going to add just a drop of cold, wants to be cold water, not um, hot water. Obviously, the hot water will cause that fat to um, melt, and we don't want to melt it too much. We just want it to bind everything together. Good morning if you are joining us wherever in the world you're joining us from, from Facebook, from YouTube. We are on our first festive bake of the year. This is a chocolate baby's tart. We're just making a chocolate pastry. So this is coming together. I'm going to start um, giving it a bit of a go with my hands now. Just a touch more Water. I've used the egg dish there to make sure I get all that yolk in there. That helps bring all the richness here. Yeah, it's going to go with the spoon now rather than the knife. And you can pull this together on the work surface if you want to, or just get your hands in to it. So. Get your hands in <laughs> and it will start to come together now as you bring it. It is a messy one, it is chocolate pastry. <laughs> Once you've made this, I'm saying you can make this ahead if you want to. Once you've made the pastry, you can chill it or in the fridge. Um, for 30 minutes at least uh, before you roll it out, or you can um, make it, uh, pop it in the freezer, double wrap it and pop it in the freezer. So, as you can see there, we've got a smooth, it's got a lot darker now we've added that egg in there, smooth pastry thing, a little bit of that on my fingers, let's get all the bits out. I made one yesterday, so we've got time to roll out. Let's just pop that then. Get a pastry. I'm just going to wash my hands again. This is a, it is a slightly chocolatey and messy one. So let's get rid of some of these. I'm learning to clear down this area a little bit more because it's just helpful. And What we'll do then with this is I'm going to wrap it in pen film. Or plastic wrap. Because I'm going to pop this in the fridge, but then um, I've got something else to make for this tomorrow. Or if I don't use it, um, I will pop it. I will then wrap it in a, um, a piece of kitchen foil and pop it in the freezer. We do that to help prevent the freezer burn, um, just making sure it's well wrapped. But if you leave this, this will keep in the freezer for up to um, a month is best, but you can make this up to three months in advance. Just obviously make sure it comes up to room temperature and is thoroughly defrosted before you use it. So that's going in the fridge. This is our chocolate pastry. It's going in the fridge now. Um, if I was going to be making the tart straight with that, I'd want at least 30 minutes, um, if not longer, just to get all the fat and everything well combined again. So then, in the good words of Blue Peter, here's what I made earlier. Um, 
and we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna roll this one out then for our we're gonna go in with our rectangle tray remember this will uh, make a nine inch round tart tin scrub okay now most people will flower the work surface and will roll out on that work surface on the flower dust your rolling pin dust your thing um, and then um, pop it in you can do that definitely great way to do it but remember don't add too much flour you're going to need flour because it's help easier to roll it out but if you add too much flour it's going to end up into your pastry which is then going to cause your pastry to become really really short and crumbly so um if you do do that remember to dust off any excess flour before you use your tin now the other way of doing it <laughs> i'm gonna try it it's been a while since i've done it this way is to roll it between pieces of cling film now i went to a pastry course um was very lucky to be invited to a pastry course with Raymond Blanc of Le Manoir um, and his amazing pastry chefs. And this is what they taught me. Um, now, the, now, I don't think, sadly, this cling film is wide enough, uh, but we're going to give it a go. So lay out, and if not, we will go to the old school method of flowering everything and getting in a mess. <laughs> so we want to lay out a, oh, here we go. It's already going to start. This is one you want, need one of those dispensers, isn't it? That just pulls it all out and things. So we're going to lay out our first bottom sheet of um, cling film. Now this is going to, this is slightly better because we're going in with the long tart tin. Um, and with our chocolate pastry now, we're just gonna have a look, see what it is, and just work it a little bit before we pop it out. So, let's say this was made last night, so it's had a good couple of hours chilling um, overnight and it's been out in the fridge for about half an hour or so now so it should be good to roll just give that a moment um, before we go we want to set the oven temperature so we're going to be baking this in an oven that's got everything in it <laughs> in the middle of our oven at 180 degrees C on fan. Um, now somebody asked me on blog yesterday or the day before about top and bottom um, what do you call them? Uh, heating bits of your uh, actually I'm going to just pop this there because this is going to need a little bit of work to it. They asked me about um, uh top and bottom oven heat if you are making um things if you've got fan oven um, all of my recipes are for fan if you have um uh if you've got an, a conventional oven then if you use uh, unless i say so you want to be using top and bottom heat um, things like meringues though are better in the bottom, uh, although of the oven with both heats. Um, and if you can do top and bottom heat so that uh, it's got lots of, um, you've got even uh, even distribution then of the heat all the way around. So what I'm just doing is I'm just getting my pastry a little bit pliable before we start rolling it out. Um, Getting well covered in chocolate. <laughs> There's no bowl for Ian this week. So. <laughs> uh, but I'm just using, like I say, a pinch of flour, not too much, just to help um, it uh, stop it sticking all over the work surface. So I've got 
my dome. I'm not overworking it, I'm not getting it too warm. I'm just getting it ready. But, right, I'm gonna just pop that to one side and then bring our plastic wrap cling film back over now. Yeah. You know what cling film's like? It has a mind of its own and it has decided it's gonna get narrower. <laughs> so um, what we're going to do is I'm doing this in for the rectangle tin, so I'm going to long, roll a long rectangle there. I'm just going to help my dough start itself off by pushing it down and pop it on the top there. Then I'm going to take another piece of cling film. Oops, come on and over the top. Now, like I say, you can do it definitely with flour if you prefer. I haven't done it this way for a long time, so I'm hoping it's going to work. If not, we're going back to flour. So, <laughs> with our rolling pin then, we can just roll out our pastry in our cling film. It means we don't have to have any extra flour. And Every so often then, what you'll do is you'll just peel that cling film back a little bit to lose any bubbles back there. It's gonna, we're not gonna get enough width on here, so we're gonna go as far as we can before we have to <laughs> use the flower method, I think. But you can as well then pick your pastry up and turn it around. So we're looking for pastry that's about three to four millimetres thick. If you're in the UK, that's about the size, the depth of a pound coin or a euro, I think, if you're in Europe. Now, you can see it's coming together. I need to get this longer. So I'm just going to play that still quite thick. That's fine. And it does just come off the cling film really easily. So don't worry about getting that in your pastry. I want to make this into a long rectangle so I'm going to squidge my pastry just a little bit, push it under the cling film. This can be more fiddly as you can see but actually it's a lot easier in terms of getting it um, not adding extra flour or anything to your thing. Now, I'm being naughty. You need to be rolling away from you always um, for pastry rather than towards you, but I'm finding it a bit awkward on this work surface today, I will admit. So, peel our cling film back. Let's have a look. We're not far off, not far off at all. So I'm just gonna give, the, give it a little bit of a tuck in so we can get some length on there. And now remember, if, we, if you do this, you want to peel back the cling film and then relay it so we're not trapping anything. It helps the pastry move easier. You can also do this if you are making um, cookies as well. So with the gingerbread man, or if you've seen this week, I've read on the gingerbread um, reindeer on the blog with some new pictures. You can roll out the same way if you want to. 
go. Just lift that back up like I say. Release it at that end. Bit of an arm workout as always when rolling pastry. I'm like I say, you want to be rolling away from you more than anything. Again, even roll all over. Ah, we are very nearly there. So let's just release that and what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip it around again. This does help prevent your pastry from cracking when you're rolling. Oops, let's not lift that at the moment. Let's I'm just going to make sure I've got plenty of width there. And we want a little overhang on our pastry case when we put it in the tin. That's going to help it uh, with the whole shrinking thing. So. I'm looking at that. It's about the right thickness, our pound coin or our one euro. And I'm looking at our tin. And yes, that's going to be just about right. So we didn't use any of the flour really, apart from that first bit to um, just loosen up our dough before we rolled it out. You don't want to roll your dough cold. Rolling it cold is going to really cause it to crack. You're going to be fighting it you, It's because it's solid as the butter, the fats in there have rested overnight in the fridge. So bring it up to room temperature, give it a little bit of a knead like we did, and then roll it out. I'm with flour all within the cling film as you've seen I've done here. So then with our tart tin, fingers crossed, here <laughs> it goes, we're going to lift it. So what you can do is lift the top one and if you've got cling film that's wide enough as you've rolled it, you can actually lay, uh, use that to flip it onto your tart tin. Um, but also it helps you uh, Helps you um, maneuver it as well without too much damage. So, uh, fingers crossed. Oh, I'm trying to think of the best way of doing this with my left handedness. <laughs> I'm going to, oh. if it tears, don't worry. It's fine. Um, I'm going to lift it and lay it over now. And I'm going to use that cling film to reposition it. So, um, and then take, oops, take that off. So gently, you just lift and put it in. Don't worry if it tears. What we don't want to do is stretch it. If you stretch it, it is going to cause it to shrink. Oops. Helps if you've got your loose base in properly. Yeah, stretching it will cause it to shrink. So because you're already pulling at that and then when it bakes it will shrink away. So get um, that in, get a nice overhang, just gently um, thing it. Now I've got a little bit here over this edge where I've got a hole and I need to um, fill in here. So where's my knife? Where's my paper? So with my knife, I'm just going to take a little bit of the lots of excess that I've got on here. And I'm just going to patch it um, over the top. Not 
pretty, but hey, that's going to be filled with Bailey's at the end, Bailey's chocolate. And I'm just going to do the same here. Rather than pulling, like I say, rather than pulling that pastry and giving it um, an excuse to shrink back, I'm just, you'll see them do it on Bailey Croft but, um, as well, you know, they'll fill the holes and stuff like that. And then have an overhang. We can trim off some of the excess, excess overhang um, if we want. But not too much. And then we're going to pop that in the fridge for five minutes before we bake it. So just to let it just to let it rest up a little bit. It's just that workout as our pastry. We all know what that's like. So um, just give it a little bit of a rest in there we go. I didn't make enough room in the fridge this morning. Let's get out what we need and then I'll have room to put him in. in its tin in the fridge just resting for five minutes got a little bit of pastry left over you can um you could make a little tart with this you could freeze it you can um, do whatever you want but there's a little bit of chocolate pastry left over so let's think then about the next thing so just going to quickly give my hands a swirl Right, and when we bake this then, what we're going to do is, because the tart itself, the tart filling is no bake, we're going to bake it in one hit, but we're going to bake it uh, in two parts. So we're going to bake the first part of the tart, we're going to bake it blind with, um, so we'll, we'll lay a layer of baking parchment in there, and then we'll fill it with some rice, or if you've got baking beans, um, you can fill it with that or with dried pasta. I have baking beans somewhere, lo and behold, I cannot find it when I need it. Um, and we'll do that for 20 minutes at 180. And then for the last 10 minutes, we will, we will um, take out the, the parchment and the rice and we'll bake it open for the final 10 minutes. We'll then let it cool and then we'll fill the tart, the filling into the tart then and just then keep it in the fridge to set. Uh, you can if you want to, if you want to use the pastry and make the tarts for different tarts, you can take it up to that first point of baking blind if you're going to put another baked filling in. So bake it blind for that first sort of 15 minutes and then you can freeze the tart if you want to or if you're putting a baked filling in you take it out, cool it, add your filling and then pop it back in the oven and that will finish off baking. Don't bake it for the full sort of 25 minutes because you'll over bake your tart then and it will be, um, it will be too crisp for you. We're looking for that nice, sweet, short pastry. So whilst that just has five minutes in the fridge um, before we put it into the oven, we're going to make our uh, filling. So this, like I say, is a Bailey's chocolatey ganache sort of all sorts of things coming together and it doesn't have to be Bailey's you could use a chocolate orange Cointreau if you wanted to or a gingerbread cure or something like that um, and bring it through you I also thought because um I found mint caramels you could make it you could have a nice mint caramel in the bottom there but you could also make it with like a, a mint liqueur so there's lots of peppermint liqueurs out at the moment that you can get um candy cane ones or even if you wanted to like an old-fashioned creme de menthe. so you could just pop that in there as well and have that minty chocolate ganache filling but we're going for baileys or the old bally castle because we couldn't get any so this is aldi's finest which actually is great for, for baking as well. If you're on a budget, I think these are 
they really aren't that much a bottle. I think we're looking about six, seven quid a bottle. So we're going to start then with making our ganache just like you normally would do. And um, we're going to need a saucepan and a heat proof bowl. So in our saucepan, we're going to bring together our Baileys and our cream. And we're just going to heat it into it. Oh, just bubbles. Always the cream pops back at me. So let's get all the creamy bits off. And we're using, we're going to be making quite a lot. It's quite deep tarts. This is 300 mils of double cream straight in there. Oh, in it goes. Make sure you get it all out. 300 mils. Oops. Put on the work surface. Ooh. And in there as well, we're going to add now our Baileys. So this is 150 mils of Baileys. You can use less if you want to, um, but we're going for a bit of a kick on here. So give, add it in, give it a stir, and then what we're going to do is we're just going to pop this onto the heat then, just to start cooking through until it's just boiling. Um, it's coming to a simmer. Don't overboil it because uh, or overcook it because we'll catch the cream and that's not what we want. So just put that to the side. So this goes on the hot. Again, you can do it in the microwave, like I've said before, with things. Um, 30 second blast. Um, but I. <laughs> It's easier sort of um, on the hob for this, you can control it a little bit more. So into here, then into our heat proof bowl, we're going to add our chocolate. Uh, we're using a milk and a dark chocolate. We're using a mixture because actually if we go all dark chocolate, although it's really rich and really decadent, um, these are, um, it's a lot sort of uh, mixing the two, the milk chocolate, adds a little bit more sweetness that the dark chocolate adds, it counteracts the bitterness of too much dark chocolate. We're going to have the sweetness from the, the cream anyway and also the sugar in the Baileys. But having the mix of the two as well is going to make it a really nice, rich chocolate dessert, but not one way you're thinking, oh, that's a bit too rich. <laughs> so we've got a nice balance of the two in here. So we're just going to, like normally making a normal ganache, we're just going to Break it up um, into chunks, and it's, I always find it easy to do this in the packet, and it also stops me eating it as I do it. So make sure we've got a good thing, and once we've done this, we'll then pop our tart in the Fridge. In the, in the fridge in the oven. We'll take it out of the fridge and put it in the oven. So in goes our dark chocolate and in goes our milk. This packet says go on, no one's looking. Does that mean I can have a piece of chocolate and nobody will know apart from the entire internet? Um, oops. If you want it small because when we add the milk, uh, the, the cream and the heated Baileys, it will make it easier for it to, to melt up. Uh, I think we're, we're there. You see, if, if, if you don't believe me, it says here. Um, oh, you won't be able to see it. It says, go on, no one's looking. So that means I can eat a piece and nobody knows. <laughs> uh, that's just the So then also what you'll add into your chocolate as well is the last of the butter. And this is 50 grams of butter. Again, it's been in the fridge. Don't want it too soft um, because otherwise it will just become really, really fatty when we add the cream to it. So just pop all that together and pop to one side. I've popped that on a trivet because I'm going to add hot liquid to it and I don't want it to burn the um, work surface. So then our 
top. Bless its cottons, has had a little rest in the fridge. And that's just to firm those fats back up again before we put it in the oven. Gives it a fighting chance of just not totally disintegrating. Um, I prepared some baking pot from earlier. So I'm just going to lay that over the top here. And then with my rice, or if you've got baking beans. Oops. It just helps it not bubble up. Um, so you don't need too much, but enough to weight that down. And now this is going in at uh, 180 for 15 to 20 minutes to start with. It's probably going to be about 15 minutes on this one. I should know, 20 minutes, this is going in baseline, then we'll remove that and um, so middle shelf, middle shelf is good, it means everything comes together, gets a really nice good circulation. Excellent. Whew. So then, our last bit, let's have a look at our cream. This needs a little bit more heating. I can smell the babies. I can smell it all cooking um, together. But I do need that to heat just a little bit more because we want that heat to melt our chocolate. So we'll just give that a second. And we're gonna add just a dash of our vanilla extract into here as well. So. And then what will happen is once we've made that and it's all thing, this needs to cool a little bit down and obviously wait for our pie to, our pie, our tart to cook through. So by the time that's cooked through and it's had a chance to cool down, our ganache will be ready as well to pour in. Don't want to be putting our hot ganache into the pastry because it's going to cook, keep cooking it, it's going to retain that heat. So we want it to dry, um, we want it to uh, cool down first before we add this, because once we add this, we're gonna pop it straight into the fridge. So having this cooled down a bit before we add as well, not only helps with the pastry, but means we're not adding something that's hot into the fridge, which is always a no-no. And let's come on. This here now is Getting hot. And okay, I can start to see it bubbling on the side. So um, that's my cue that our cream and our babies is nice and warm. So I haven't boiled this too, I haven't boiled it, I've just let it start to show bubbles around the edge. I don't know if you can see on that, but there's lots of steam coming off, so I know it's nice and hot. So that's our cream and our babies in there. So on this one then, we've got our chocolate, our milk chocolate, our dark chocolate, and our butter and I'm just going to pour this over the top. In it goes and the heat from the cream is what's going to melt our chocolate. I say you can do this in the um, microwave if you prefer. What you can also do is just thinking then, because I could smell it, is um, you could add a little drop of coffee as well into here um, if you wanted to. So this is melting through now. So we're just going to leave it for a moment for it to start to do its magic. Then we're going to start to stir it all together. We're nearly there. And it will be hot. This is hot. This is why we're going to let it cool before we add it into our tart tin. Nice, no, that's a good. So, as I say, you could do this with um, uh, orange liqueur, so a Cointreau or a Grand Marnier. 
uh, somewhere. There's our second 30 minute. So I can now see that my butter's starting to melt with the heat as well. So I know that things like the chocolate are melting as well. So I'm just gonna start agitating this all together. I'm not gonna give it a massive stir, just a really gentle fold it through thing. Actually, the more I think about it, this would be really nice with a mint um, caramel or a mint uh, chocolate there. Um, the reason I say, because I was going to do, and it all went a bit to pot, last I was gonna put this caramel layer in. Now there is a caramel, um, uh, a salted caramel or that you can make as caramel on the blog and add a dash of the Baileys to it as well. But you can also make, um, I was gonna make it with a, a quick caramel for you, which is where you just can make it with, just don't, you know, like the dairy toffees, the Jersey toffees that you get, the soft ones, not the hard worthers, but those soft ones. And you can make um, a really quick and easy toffee sauce um, like that with um, and then you melt the toffees add a touch of the cream and let it cool um, for some bizarre reason with our UK second lockdown it seems there is no toffees to be had except for a variety of toffees so I ordered two bags and I thought oh that there'll be plenty of normal ones in there plenty of normal ones in there and in amongst all of this I had three ordinary toffees. I was like, Phew. so I looked at the other flavors. There was licorice, banana, mint, and orange. And I thought, well, we could get away with the orange. The orange could be quite nice. Um, and then there was only four of them. And there was banana I'm allergic to, but in this whole packet, there was 15 of them. There was 12 licorice and about six mint. So that all went out the window. But you can make a really simple toffee sauce that can go in the bottom of this by melting just regular Jersey dairy toffees and um, adding a drop of cream to it. It's really, really simple. So this has melted, I've run it through. Um, I am just gonna add my drop of vanilla now. And I've just realised I forgot to put the timer on. So let's go with 15 on that. So I'm just going to add a drop of vanilla in it here. If you, let's say, if you don't want to add the uh, Baileys, you can, you could just go a bit more with the, this, you can add a peppermint extract as well if you don't want to use an alcohol for the mint flavour. Um, and things like that, or coffee cure, or actually Chambord, like the raspberry one, and you could put a layer of raspberry, um, like a raspberry sauce in the bottom rather than caramel, oh my god. But Bailey's for me is Christmas, rich, absolutely decadent, over the top is Christmas as well. So I'm going to tip it, but as you can see, this is our chocolate ganache. It is quite thick, but still quite runny at the moment, which is fine, but it's also still quite warm. So I'm just going to pop that to one side and let it cool whilst our tart finishes off what it's doing. So let's get rid. And that is all we can do for the moment. So, because this is in there, it's baking away nicely. In fact, it's probably going to shrink a bit because there's some bits falling off the side. <laughs> Wonderful, happy days. Um, but it's all sort of coming together um, and that will blind bake, like I say, for a little bit longer. And then I will remove the baking beans, the, the rice in this case, and then just bake it for another 10 minutes um, before letting that cool and letting my ganache cool. And I will fill the ganache into the tin, into the case whilst it's still in the tin, leave it in the fridge. So it's going to set in the fridge. You know, it only takes a couple of hours, but actually you want to get it overnight if you can, or at least six hours. So like I said, this is great if you want to make it ahead and, and, and do it the day before and then serve it. 
the following day. If you're doing it for like a Boxing Day here in the UK, you could make it earlier in the week and it can be frozen. You can freeze your tart case or you can freeze your pastry however you prefer. So let's have a just a little quick recap. So today we have made a Bailey's chocolate tart. This is really decadent, really good, hits all those chocolate notes for Christmas. It's got a good hit of the old Baileys in there as well. And I've done it in a rectangle tin, but you can do this. This recipe is for a nine inch loose based tin, so around nine inch one. And that's gonna give you 10 to 12 slices, some really good slices there as well. Um, and it's, you can cheat with it. If you don't wanna make a pastry, you can make a biscuit crust, an Oreo biscuit crust. Um, or you could make it gluten-free by using a gluten-free flour in the pastry or by um, using a gluten-free biscuit crust as well. And if you don't want to add the alcohol, that's fine. You can take that out as well if you don't want that. And then we say you can switch it around. You could add an orange liqueur, a gingerbread one, a coffee liqueur. And we've just thought about a raspberry one as well. So, um, and if you want to really indulge in it, you can add that layer of caramel in the bottom as well. This guy is, like I say, this is one that I did on the blog before. This has got the caramel layer in there. So I will link to that if you want to do the caramel as well. Um, it's just really good. It's re I love it. It smells so good in here. It smells Christmasy because there's chocolate and there's Baileys and it's like, ah! And we've got the chocolate, the Christmas dress on, not you can see it underneath my apron. <laughs> So we made a chocolate pastry just with some quick basic ingredients, plain flour, cocoa powder, a little bit of icing, not icing powder, I mean icing sugar, um, a little touch of butter and some egg yolks to bring together a really rich, deep chocolate pastry, which is we're blind baking at the moment and our fingers crossed it's worked. Um, and for our filling, which we've got here chilling at the moment, it's just a smoother ganache and we've balanced out that really deep, bitter, dark chocolate flavour with some milk chocolate in there as well. And as you can see, it's still got that nice, deep, dark colour. We've used double cream, we can use heavy cream, but you want something with the high fat content because that's what's going to help everything set together. So double cream, whipping cream, heavy cream um, uh, is what you want. Full fat cream, yes. <laughs> it's Christmas after all. Um, and we've got Bailey's in in there or we've used the Aldi uh, owned brand Valley Castle but you can use all everything. Like I say, equipment wise you just need a mixing bowl, a rolling pin and a tart tin. Everything is done by hand but if you want to you can make your pastry in a food processor as well. So this guy, oops, this guy in here is, is baking away. He's got a few minutes uh, to go still before we take those baking beans out because we've blind baked him as well and then we're all set to go so um we are i'm gonna have to leave these guys to finish themselves off and then i will assemble them and i will pop everything up as always on the facebook and show you guys what it looks like and the full recipe will be coming i've got two days off from work Yay! So I've got two days holiday to catch up on all the stuff that I want to do, um, which rolls around the blog. I've got lots of recipes to post and things to go. So don't forget, you can find everything. Oh, where has it gone? Down here on the website as well. There's some new Christmas recipes up there as well that are coming through, and there's some old ones that I've revamped. We've got the Christmas pudding, the Rice Krispie Treats Christmas puddings are up there. They are going mental at the moment. They're great as well. Um, and somebody asked me if you could make them ahead as well and freeze them, and you certainly can do. So that post has been rebound. There's lots more information in there about those. We've also got the gingerbread reindeer on there, and they've been revamped. There's some new pictures, and there's all the good stuff about how to get them and make them pretty and, and ice them and decorate them. So they're also all on the blog as well. So as we get closer into Christmas, there's all the lots of little treats. Um, they're up there and if you're making them for, for gifts this year because it's you know it's a bit it's gonna be a bit different they are perfect gifts um, for everybody else so then in the meantime oh there we go 
Thank you. Woo. Thank you for watching. We have um, down there, our next episode next week is Stir Up Sunday, which is here in the UK. It is a thing we're going to make a Christmas cake. So um, and you get that already. And you normally is about Christmas pudding. I'm not a Christmas pudding fan. So we're going to be making our Christmas cake next week. And then in a couple of weeks time, we're going to be icing and decorating it. So if you want to join me next week uh, for Stir Up Sunday, then let me know. Drop me a comment because I've got a whole list of ingredients for you guys if you want to join us on a really easy, simple Christmas cake extravaganza next Sunday. We're going to really be getting in the Christmas spirit. And on Wednesday this week, if you haven't seen, I've posted the full schedule on the Facebook page. We are doing um, a little bonus episode for little things that I want you know, you guys have been asking for in the meantime, and we're going to be doing a uh, mincemeat. So we're going to be making our homemade mincemeat on Friday, on Wednesday evening. So now you can see Father Christmas and my snowman again. Uh, <laughs> so on Wednesday evening here in the UK, so we're going to be doing a homemade mince meat. I will post the ingredients up before then, so you can, um, if you want to join us, you can do as well. So yeah, I hope you like the whole Christmas festive green and red and snowflakes look. Um, and the Christmas, the Christmas tree is over here as well. As always, if you have any comments, please let me know. Drop me a message or drop them in the comments box below. Um, any ideas for New Year now, because we are so chocked up with Christmas stuff. Any ideas for baking ideas into the new, new Year, please let me know. Maybe we should think about a few healthier bakes. I don't know what you guys think about healthy bakes, but if you'd like some, please let me know and we will do some research ready for the new year. Crikey, can't believe I'm saying that. But as always, in the meantime, wherever you are in the world, if you're in lockdown, if you're not in lockdown, if you are seeing loved ones still or checking on people, wherever you are, please be kind to each other. Please show everybody lots of love. We're all in this together. Um, and I hope you are safe and well. In the meantime, I will leave you to your Sunday. Thank you for watching. Bye.